Okay, up next for my favorite chum fry patterns, I'm going to go with this little, uh, it's just an olive and tan bead chain clouser. Um, a couple years ago, I bumped into a guy on the beach. Uh, we got to chatting, and it uh, turns out he uh, was a member of Washington Fly Fishing, as am I. And uh, so we knew who each other were from reading each other's posts. And we both sort of had a frustrating day where the fish were around. They were obviously feeding on chum fry, but we just couldn't really get them to get too dialed in on what they wanted as far as a fly pattern. Uh, we chatted for a bit. I was just getting ready to head out, and uh, he headed up the beach, up the road to a different beach. Well, that evening, the next morning, whenever it was, he uh, made a post on Washington Fly Fishing that he had had some success after he had left me. And he shared a picture of this little bead chain clouser that he had used. Um, he said he got it at maybe at an Orvis store or a fly swap or something. I don't recall. But uh, it was just one of those desperation moves, I think, where you're, you're digging in the back corners of your fly box. And it uh, turned out to work really well for him. So, of course, I've copied it since then. And it has become really one of my most productive patterns um, year round but especially it seems this time of year when the chum fry are out uh, it's extremely effective uh, fits my criteria of being really easy to tie three ingredients and a bead chain eye uh, that's it it uh, doesn't get much simpler than that um, I like to tie them extremely sparse uh, I think the bead chain doesn't really give it a lot, of, a lot of jigging action per se I think it's just enough to kind of flip the hook and have it ride hook up but uh, when you know it doesn't have the par marks of a standard chum fry pattern and really it doesn't have much of a chum fry look to it but I'm here to tell you I fish it as a chum fry pattern and it produces so uh, to get started I got a Gamagatsu SC15 and uh, 6 aught olive done thread I don't know I just use a dark colored thread it doesn't matter and uh, I'm going ahead and lay down a thread base I really like the SC15s for my chum fry patterns because they're they're light and they got that shorter hook shank which prevents me from from getting too out of hand with the size of the fly which I can do sometimes. Um, however, the last I've said this before the last few weeks I've been out quite a few of these fly these hooks and uh, so that's been kind of frustrating. In fact, just the other day I lost about a six pound black mouth on this this very fly and this hook and it snapped the hook which was I wasn't too thrilled about that but still it was pretty awesome to hook that fish so I'm just gonna put on my uh, bead chain eyes here I like to secure these things pretty well I hate I hate clouds or fly style flies where the eyeballs are moving all around because you'd only put a few thread wraps on it and just a pet peeve of mine, it's no big deal. You notice I do some uh, helicopter wraps kind of underneath the, the eye, and that's to kind of suck those thread wraps in tight. This thing wants to rotate around while I'm tying it. generally fish this fly on, a, on an intermediate line. Uh, I fish a full intermediate shooting head nearly 100% of the time. I don't fish floating lines all that often. Uh, a few reasons for that, but I, uh, I'm usually fishing either the outbound short, the Rio outbound short full intermediate, or lately I've been fishing the, uh, the Rio coastal quick shooter line, which is apparently designed for for our kind of fishing. Now I like to put a little bit of glue after I've got this thing secured. Maybe I don't know if it really helps or not, but like I said, I don't like that thing moving all over the place. So next I'm going to add a little bit of flash. Uh, this is like a root beer colored crystal flash. Uh, I don't need very much. Just few strands really. I don't want this thing to be too crazy. So I've got I don't know, six strands, six or eight strands maybe. 
And I'm going to tie these in first because I kind of want them between the two layers of bucktail. Uh, if I put it in on top of one of the layers, it just kind of looks goofy to me. So if I don't have confidence in a fly, I won't fish it. Okay. It's probably a little longer than I need, but I'll trim that. Next, I'm going to go with some tan colored bucktail. Um, don't need a whole heck of a lot of this because we're trying to keep this fly very sparse. Lately, I've been uh, experimenting with tying these on, on bigger hooks like size fours and then just trying to tie them the same size as I would here. And I, I'm having real trouble with that. I always find that I I tend to overdo it with my materials when I have the bigger hook for some reason. Uh, with bucktail, it really doesn't take much. I think that's the biggest secret is less is more. It's only people tell me they have trouble working with bucktail and I think that's a lot of the problem. So I just have like, you know, 20 strands of bucktail here, not very much. I want that a little bit shorter than the flash that I have. And I tie that in behind the eyeballs. I tie all my clousers this way. Uh, stonefish over at Washington Fly Fishing was taught me that several years ago. And just if you, you know, the standard way of tying a clouser is to tie the tie the top eyeballs in or tie everything up in front pull the hair over the top and secure it but when you're fishing the beaches all that really does is create a point where your your bucktail is going to hit the hit the rocks fray out and that's where you're going to lose start losing your fly uh, by tying it in behind i can secure it all down glue it whatever and i don't have to worry about that being an issue so now i'm going to invert the hook thank you rotary vice and we're going to go with some olive bucktail The tan bucktail that I have right now is not very good, but this olive that I got is fantastic. I really like it. It's, it's got nice and wavy and great taper to it. But it annoys me because the every time I tie these flies, the, uh, the olive looks better than the tan. And I'm just OCD enough, I guess, that that bugs me. Luckily, the fish really don't seem to care. So, come in, this can be kind of a pain on these small hooks, but get that bucktail on there and then I can kind of position it if I need to move it, but that looked like it came on the part pretty well. And that's literally it. <laughs> it doesn't not get much more simple than this. So whip finish on here. And drop a glue. There is not much to this fly, but I'm here to tell you. Cutthroat and Resident Coho will eat this thing with reckless abandon. You're just going to have to try to tie some of these up and go test them for yourself. Went a little crazy with the glue there. That's alright. Okay. So there you have it. Just olive and tan bead chain clouser. Give it a whirl. I promise this is a good fly. Thanks for watching.